Welcome! In this video I'll show you how to solve problem 8.2 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says, an illuminating alternative derivation of the WKB formula is based on an expansion in powers of h bar. Motivated by the free particle wave function, psi is a to the e plus or minus i p x over h bar, we write psi as just e to the i times some complex function f divided by h bar. Now what we want to do in part a is put this into the Schrodinger equation and show that that equation right there holds. Then we want to write f of x as a power series in h bar and collect like powers of h bar to show the following things there. And finally we want to solve for f0 and f1 and to show that to first order of h bar, we recover the equation that we had already seen for the WKB approximation. Okay, so let's just go ahead and begin here. So part A, now we want to write psi as some function e to the i f of x divided by h bar. So if we want to now plug this into the Schrodinger equation that we have seen before. So what we found earlier was that we could write the Schrodinger equation, which began like this, right? Plus the potential psi equal to e psi. We wrote this as d squared psi dx squared. This is equal to minus p squared over h bar squared psi. So that's where we want to plug it into. So we need to take a few derivatives here. Now, psi of x prime, this is simply i times f prime of x divided by h bar e to the i f of x. Now the second derivative, psi prime prime of x, this is, we get another i when we derive the exponent, so we get minus f prime of x squared divided by h bar squared e to the i f of x. And then deriving the f prime, we get plus i f prime prime of x e to the i f of x over h bar. So now we want to plug this into this version of the Schrodinger equation. So by doing that, we get minus f prime of x squared divided by h bar squared e to the i f of x plus i f prime prime of x h bar e to the i f of x. And then we have minus, so this is equal to minus p squared h bar squared times psi. But psi is e to the i f of x over h bar. Okay, I forgot about the h bar here. Okay. There we go. So here we can simplify a little bit. We can multiply through by h bar squared. So we only have h bar here now, maybe down here. And we can also get rid of the exponents because they are not going to be zero and they are the same everywhere. So there we go. So this is what we are left with. Minus f prime squared plus i f prime prime h bar equal to minus p squared which is exactly what we have right here, right? I h prime f, h bar f prime prime. We have it in, in a different order, right? This is the first part. Then we have minus f prime squared, which is right here. And that is equal to minus p squared, which is the same. Of course, they wrote it uh, in a different order, but it is the same. Now, we want to write f of x as a power series in h bar. So basically f zero x plus h prime f one plus h squared f two, right? Basically a Taylor series, um, but with h bar kind of, not, not the same, but the, the idea, we're expanding it in terms of h bar. And then we will collect terms of h bar. So let's begin with that. So as they're saying f of x, we will collect as some, something f zero with no x, no, no, no h, h bars, then f one times h bar plus f two h bar squared. I will omit the of x notation for now, um, just to save myself some trouble and some other ones, but because h bar is so small, h bar squared 
is already pretty small, so going any smaller than that uh, doesn't really make any sense. So now we want to put this instead of what we have down there, I mean up there. But for that, we need the derivatives. So we need f prime of x, which is simple. This is f0 prime plus f1 prime h bar plus f2 prime h bar squared, and so on. And the second derivative, that's going to be easy as well. This is simply f0 prime prime plus f1 prime prime h bar plus f2 prime prime h bar squared, and so on. So what about when we have to square, because here we have to square, right, f prime squared. So when we do that, we have to square this thing, basically. We will get this part squared, so f0 prime squared. We will also get this squared, so plus f1 prime h bar squared, and this thing squared. And we also get this thing squared. However, if we consider that term, we get h bar to the fourth power, which is beyond what we want to consider. So for that reason, we will not include it here because it, it basically goes to zero. Then we have cross terms. So we have two times the product of these two. So we get plus two f zero prime f one prime h bar. Then we have two times the product of these two. But if we do that, we will get h bar cubed and we don't want to do that. We also have two times the product of these two, which will be plus two f zero prime f two prime h bar squared. Okay, now we are in a position to plug everything in there. So let's see, this will be f zero prime squared with a minus sign in front, minus f one prime squared h bar squared minus 2 f0 prime f1 prime h bar minus 2 f0 prime f2 prime h bar squared. Now plus this part right there. So i h bar times f prime prime. So we get plus i h bar f0 prime prime plus i h bar squared f1 prime prime and now comes this, but there we will get h bar cubed. So that will be outside of our interest. So we don't need to include it. So then we just add p, right? It was negative on the right hand side. We can now add it up. And um, p squared, of course, sorry. Okay, so now let's begin equating powers of h because in order for this equation to hold, everything with an h has to be the same, everything with an h bar has to be uh, with an h bar squared has to be the same and everything without h bar has to be the same. So h to the zero gives us minus f zero prime squared has to be the same as minus p squared, right? So basically, these two things have to be the same. So this and this, the only things without h bar. Now h bar to the first power we get this thing. So 2 f0 prime f1 prime h bar. And then we have another h bar here. So plus, so this is negative, plus i h bar f0 prime prime. So from here, let's see, we can write this as 2 f0 prime f1 prime. We of course can't get rid of these h bars. Um, has to be the same as i f0 prime prime. And finally, from h bar squared, we get this thing. So minus f1 squared, then we have this minus 2 f0 prime f2 prime, and then this. So plus i h bar squared f1 prime prime, this is equal to zero. And I think there's no prime there. Okay. Now let's see exactly to what form we want to bring them into. So the first one is already done. You can see this is already what we have down there. Then we want i f0 prime prime is equal to 2 f0 prime f1 prime. So what do we have? We have 2 f0 prime f1 prime is equal to i f0 prime prime. So there we go. Now 
in the last one we get want i if one prime prime is equal to everything else. So well of course we can get rid of this h bar squared there. It shouldn't even have been there. So here we can isolate if one prime prime with the i still, which is f1 prime squared plus 2 f0 prime f2 prime. So there we go. We now found the third expression that we were looking for. So there we go. Now we want to solve for f0 and f1 of x and show that to first order in h bar we would recover equation 8.10 which is as I mentioned the wkb expression. So let's see, we want to solve for f0, so basically solve this equation, and this equation, and this equation for f0. So the, this one is quite easy, right? We can immediately see that f0 prime is equal to plus or minus p. And thus, if we want to find f0, we simply integrate both sides, and we get that f0 is going to be plus or minus, the integral of p dx, and this, of course, plus some constant of integration. Now, what about this second equation right here? Well, let's take a look at it. So let's write it down here again. So we get 2 f0 prime f1 prime. This is equal to i f0 prime prime. Um, so here we can separate f of 0 and f of 0 and f of 1, so we get 2 times f of 1 prime, this is equal to i f0 prime prime divided by f0 prime. And maybe we can even divide by this 2 right there. So with this, what, what is f of 0? We already saw that f of 0 prime is p. So this thing right here is simply, well, plus or minus p. So then f of 0 prime prime is simply the derivative of plus or minus p. Right? The plus or minuses, of course, now cancel out, since if this is plus, this is also plus, and if this is minus, this is also minus, which gives us plus. So this is i over 2, p prime, p. Now let's integrate both sides. So we get integral of f1, integral of this. Now integral of f1 is simple, it is just f1. And then we have i over 2. And what is this thing right here, right? Of course, integrating dx. This is 1 over p and its derivative. That is simply the natural log of p, right? Because when you derive this, you get 1 over p. And then because of the chain rule, you multiply by its derivative. So that is exactly what we have there. And of course, plus, you know, some constant of integration. I don't know, c1, because we already used c. And since we only want to solve this for the first power of h, that means that this is good enough, right? If we were to solve for f2, then we would be going for the second power of f, but, or of h, sorry, which is, of course, corresponding to f2. Now, let's put all of this together. Where did f come up in? f came here. We said, all right, we want solutions for the WKB approximation of the form psi is e to the i some function over h bar. Okay, so let's write it down here. So what we had said was that we wanted solutions of the form psi of x. This is equal to e to the i some function over h bar. But our some function, right, i over h bar, is f0 plus h bar f1 plus h bar squared f2 blah 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 and we said nope only to first order so not this only this part so by plugging in our results we get e to the i h bar and then f0 which we saw is plus or minus so plus or minus the square root <laughs> the integral of p dx plus some constant. And then we get f1, which is right there. So that is um, plus i over 2, the natural log of the momentum times h bar, 
and then plus, of course, some constant C1 times H bar. But of course, we now have one constant here, one arbitrary constant here, so we can just put them together and just call it C. It, it doesn't matter. Then we have uh, multiplying through in the exponent e to the i h bar plus or minus integral of p dx and then we have e to the let's see we get i times i so we get a minus so we get minus one half natural log of p and the h bar cancels out and then e to the c okay so what is this e to the c is simply some constant we can call it i don't know c plus, or I don't know, something, some constant. And then we have e to the plus or minus i over h bar integral of p dx. And then we have e to the minus one half, but we can write this, right, as, now put this, we can put it in the, in here, right, inside of the natural log. If we have p to the minus one half, that is the same as minus one half times the natural log, right? That is um, just a property of the natural logarithm, or of the logarith this logarithms in general. So that means that we get this times p to the minus one half, because the e and the natural log cancel out. So for that reason, p to the minus one half, we can rewrite as one over p to the one half, which is square root of p. And there we have it we recovered our result for the WKB approximation, but using an entirely different method, just simply writing our wave function as the most uh, general wave function possible. So I hope this was useful to you. Um, if it was, you know, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.